Did you ever wonder what supported those big roadway signs, mast arms, and strain poles? This video will highlight some inspection points and show how miscellaneous drill shaft foundations are constructed. You are watching D7 Now, How It's Made. References in this video are based on the 2015 FDOT specifications. You must use the applicable specifications for your contract. Installation of all drill shafts must be inspected by a CTQP qualified drill shaft inspector. A drill shaft inspector computer-based training is available on the department's website. Inspectors should familiarize themselves with the contract documents including the plans, design standards, and any applicable specifications. Inspectors should also review the approved drill shaft installation plan, shop drawings or details, and the drill shaft inspector's checklist. Inspect the contractor's equipment when it arrives on the projects. The types and sizes of the equipment will be listed on the contractor's drill shaft installation plan. Verify that the reinforcing cage is assembled according to the plans, standard index or specifications with the proper dimensions, length, spacing, and number of steel, CSL tubes, and spacers and record this information on the drill shaft reinforcement spacers log. Ensure that all intersections of steel are tied. For miscellaneous shafts, if the cleaning operations result in excavating below the required tip elevation, the reinforcing cage does not need to be extended. See specification 455-16 for information on reinforcing steel construction and placement. Once the location of the shaft is surveyed, the contractor will hand dig down the first four feet of the shaft in order to confirm there are no utility conflicts in the shaft location. Install a temporary surface casing from at least one foot above the ground surface to at least five feet below the ground surface. For miscellaneous structures, fill the excavation with pre-mixed mineral slurry meeting the requirements of 455-15.8.1 or polymer slurry meeting the requirements of 455-15.8.2 before the drill advances to the bottom of the temporary casing. Do not attempt to excavate the shaft using the dry construction method unless specifically indicated in the plans. As the contractor begins to excavate, record the depth, times of when the auger is inserted and extracted from the shaft, and soil descriptions on the drill shaft log. Depth checks should be taken from a known reference to elevation. When the shaft is excavated to the proposed tip elevation, the contractor will then use a cleanout bucket to remove any sediment deposits or other debris from the bottom of the shaft. Perform a sounding of the shaft bottom and record the depth and amount of sediment on the drilled shaft log. For miscellaneous shafts, ensure the amount of sediment does not exceed one inch over the bottom of the shaft. Sample and test the slurry in the shaft to ensure it meets the required properties at the time of concrete placement per specification 455-15.8 and record the results on the drilled shaft slurry testing log. Lower the reinforcing cage into the shaft and secure to prevent from settling or rising during concrete placement. Inspect the CSL tubes to ensure the serviceability and fill the tubes with clean potable water and recap prior to concreting. Lower the sealed watertight tremie or pump line into the shaft and ensure that the discharge end is within 6 inches of the bottom of the shaft excavation until at least 10 feet of concrete has been placed. Support the tremie so that it can be raised or lowered to increase or reduce the discharge of concrete. Do not rapidly raise or lower the tremie to increase discharge of concrete. Determine the theoretical volume of concrete needed in the shaft and use the drilled shaft concrete placement log and the drilled shaft concrete volumes log. When the concrete truck arrives to the project, check the DOT ticket for approved mix design, water cement ratio, mixing revolutions, and batch times. Sample and perform the required plastic properties tests. Place concrete as soon as possible after completing all excavation, cleaning, inspecting the shaft bottom, and immediately after placing reinforcing steel. Maintain a minimum slump of 5 inches throughout the elapsed time which includes the concrete mixing and transit time, the concrete placement time, the time required to remove the temporary casing, and the time to insert any required column, steel, bolts, weldments, etc. Measure and record the depth to the top of the concrete after each load and record the depth on the drilled shaft concrete placement log. Continue placing concrete after the casing is full until good quality concrete is evident at the top of the casing. 
After the shaft is over poured sufficiently to eliminate all contaminated concrete, additional concrete may be added to the shaft without the use of a trimming or pump in accordance with section 400. Once the concrete has been over poured, remove the trimming or pump line and the temporary surface casing. Install the conduit, set the top form to the proposed shaft top elevation, and install the anchor bolts. Use the drilled shaft concrete volumes log to plot the actual concrete curve and compare it to the theoretical. The volume curve is important because it allows you to see if there are any potential issues with the shaft. Cure the top surface of the shaft in accordance with the applicable provisions of section 400. The contractor may remove the forms prior to 7 days provided the concrete strength has reached 2500 PSI or greater as evidenced by cylinder breaks. Ensure that all construction tolerance are met per specification 455-20.